I want to say right from the start that I've never evaluated the Spark's functionality or its flight characteristics. Since I'm a service technician, I'm primarily interested in the crash resistance of any copter. In this article, we will be reviewing only this aspect of the Spark. So the main disappointment with this copter is its suspension. Despite looking quite monumental and sturdy from the outside, it's rather flimsy on the inside. All the parts which could have been made from metal in order to make this copter more reliable were instead made of plastic. The camera housing itself is made from metal, but it hangs to a motor stock on one side and to a sleeve bearing on the other. As a matter of fact, the inner casing of this sleeve bearing is made from plastic, despite it having to join together two metal halves of the camera housing. It's no surprise that all of this breaks first in any sort of crash. This cheap part, the casing which is half a millimeter thick, the suspension breaks despite being made of quite durable plastic, and it breaks at the thinnest spots since there are plenty of grooves, baffles and holes for wiring. So what are we dealing with? A rather heavy suspension, which looks deceptively sturdy but has a few inherent design flaws, which means that the pieces in between where the pitch motor connects with the roll motor are most prone to being damaged in a crash. Also, the inner casing of the sleeve bearing will be torn off in a crash. It's made of plastic and will simply be torn apart by those two metal pieces which uh, comprise the camera. The suspension is uh, stretched on dampers during a crash, breaking out a plastic restrictor from a plastic surface, the former being the same as on a Mavic, except in the form of a loop. So yeah, it's also broken during a crash, since the camera's heavy. And most importantly, just so you know, the Spark's uh, gyroscope is situated separately on the suspension. It sits on a few dampers, and in order for these dampers to work, so that they wouldn't just be a few pieces of rubber, the designers put in a mandatory steel plate. Here's a question for you. Why is the cheap suspension part on a fairly high-tech device made from a half-millimeter piece of plastic, which in any case scenario will be the first bit to crack and fall apart, becoming the most demanded part at repair shops? And uh, why do you have to pull basically the whole spark apart to replace it, except for the lower infrared sensors and the power board, which is also located at the bottom? In conclusion, I'd like to note that I had a look at the parts list for Sparks and those pieces which I just listed above in the article, and which will be in highest demand. They're just not there. 